in this live podcast recording, I want to share with you five mistakes that I made over the past seven years that I've been running my business that almost ruined my business and my relationship. And that sounds really dramatic, but I am being serious <laughs> when I say these things are red flags <laughs> and I see them a lot with clients and I recognise them in clients because I have done them myself, you know, and when I dip back into a stressful period or when something triggers me now, I have to really pull myself up on these things as a female leader. So if you're watching this and you're a woman in leadership, whether that be corporate or running your own business, I want you to listen out for these five mistakes and recognise which ones you might be making too. Because when clients come to work with me, these are some things that are really common that I spot and we can work through, but I've been through them myself. So the first one here is trying to do it all even when I felt stressed and resentful. And as a woman, we are very conditioned to want to do this, right? To want to figure it all out to basically take on the burden of urgent things, things that pop up, extra tasks. If some, if there's a problem happening, it can be really easy for us to just slip in to saviour mode, right? To, I'll fix it, I'll sort it out, I'll do it. And a mistake that I made a lot along this journey was thinking falsely, thinking and believing that that was my responsibility to take everything on and that it was easier to just do it myself. And over time, when I say when even when you feel stressed and resentful, over time it breeds that feeling because when you think about it, if you're bending over backwards for everyone around you or you're the go-to person to put the fires out when shit hits the fan or if you have a to-do list as long as your arm every single day but yet you just do it all yourself and you never ask for help you never delegate properly you even might you know ask someone to do something but then end up kind of dipping into it as well like micromanaging it a little bit for example, like you ask your partner to do something at home and then you say, oh, can you do this? Basically, all you need to do and before you know it, you've given them a full on, like, <laughs> a full on manual on how to do that thing and you feel stressed and resentful and I have felt this many times because you're not fully delegating something you're not actually asking for help because you're doing things in a way that is trying to control like the outcome of the the thing and a big common belief that a lot of women have is well if I don't do it then it won't get done and that used to be me that used to be me I can hold my hand up and say I used to be that person who said well if I don't do it it's not going to get done Ugh, if I don't if I don't do this thing in my work, it's not going to get done. Or if I ask a team member for help with this, they're not going to do it properly. It's not going to get done right. It's not going to get done in the way that I think it should be. And so I'm just going to do it myself. Or I'm going to try to get the other person to do it. You know, I'm going to ask them, but then I'm going to completely micromanage the situation and give them a laundry list of things, you know, ways in which they need to do it right? So I'm just going to end up feeling actually more stressed and resentful than if I'd just done it myself. Because what happens over time, and this is a big mistake that I was making both in my relationship but also in my business, over time when you are the go-to person and you just do everything and you're not like you're not allowing yourself to be supported, you're showing up as this hyper-independent woman, you are essentially teaching someone how to interact with you. 
to the point where I notice this in my relationship, you might notice this at work with team members as well, people are actually more reluctant to to do to to take things off your plate and to help you with things because they might they may be used to feeling like they're going to be criticized or you're going to micromanage the situation or you're not going to feel like how they've done it is good enough or they you know that you're also teaching them that they you have all of this knowledge and that you're the leader in this dynamic and therefore they need to come to you to ask you a million different questions before they go and go ahead and do that thing and we sent we unconsciously create these dynamics in our connections right at work and at home when we are making the mistake of just trying to do it all, be it all, and hold it all. And that leads to feeling stressed and resentful because, like I say, you are teaching that person that, oh, well, I can't do it. They're basically thinking, I can't do it right, so I need to ask her for all of the details again to make sure I do it right because I want to please her. And that can be showing up in team dynamics it can be showing up in a relationship, absolutely. So that's the first mistake that I made that really, really negatively impacted my energy levels. It really kept me in that hyper-independent state of survival mode, feeling like I couldn't, I couldn't allow myself to receive support. And kept, it perpetuated that belief that well, if I don't do it, then no one else will. Or if I don't do it, they won't do it right. So I may as well just do it myself. Which kept me in that cycle of overworking, of burning out, of feeling under-resourced when I was also, I was playing a part in perpetuating that. Because I was the one who wasn't allowing myself to receive the support and asking for it and delegating properly in a way that actually empowered the people around me but I was micromanaging and I was saying oh can you do this right so what you need to do is here's this like verbal diarrhea of um, exactly how you need to do it right (laughs) who resonates with this who does this with with their partner or with their kids or with a family member or with a team member at work you ask them to do something, but then you're not asking them to do it, you're basically telling them how to do it. Because you're worried that they might make a mistake or they might not do it right, you're not empowering them. And that's why every time when they come back around, they're saying, oh, just walk me through again how to do that. And I get that frustration a lot with clients in corporate roles when they work in a team because they feel like, their team are asking them the same questions over and over again. They're asking them again and again, like, walk me through this again. And it's because over time they've taught this dynamic to that person from an unconscious pattern, right, of feeling like, you know, they have to be independent and they have to be in control. But they've taught that unconscious dynamic that, like, you need to come to me so that I can... I can guide you, I can show you, you know, you're, you can't learn it yourself or you're not going to do it right. So that's the first big mistake I made that cost me a lot of time, a lot of energy and a lot of moments where I was just not in the best energy around people because I was trying to do it all and not allowing myself to be truly supported and to actually let people take things off my plate. The second mistake that I've made that has almost at times ruined my business, I I would say, is making decisions at work, not so much in my relationship, but making decisions at work from a place of ego. So thinking about what I should do what should I do or 
who like who should I invest in right what should I offer as a service or oh well I should hire this person because it makes sense on paper versus trust in my gut and trust in my intuition and being guided by what feels right for me because in contrast feminine leadership is heart-led and intuition-led and so yes when you are in work when you are running a business there are going to be times where you have to think through things you have to be logical you have to have those practical elements you know it it's not it's all well and good saying oh well it feels right to book a first class flight to Australia but that's not always logically the best decision to make right what I'm talking about here is when you are weighing up the logic with your intuition I truly believe that your intuition should always make the final call because it's your heart it's your desire as a female leader that ultimately is the secret source it's like the the magnetic spicy energy that is going to attract in the mir- the miraculous opportunities that you couldn't have even imagined but what i did a lot along the way especially if i was caught up in other people's agendas or other people's um values right looking at looking through a lens of oh well this is how they feel success this is what they think is success or this is what they think is running a successful business or this is how they lead right lead and live their life so maybe I should be trying that too or I should be doing that too but that whatever it was and often it was like even subtle things in terms of how I promote my business or um, the language that I heard people using that just didn't sit right in my body. It felt bleh. it felt icky. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel congruent and in integrity. And when I made decisions from a place of ego in terms of oh well this is what I should do this is like um this is how you're supposed to market yourself to get clients or this is how you're supposed to present yourself on social media to get more attention or whatever it might have been right whenever I did that and even though it felt icky I did it anyway because I thought that I should those decisions whenever I ignored my gut they led to less financial gain they often led to more financial loss in terms of making investment decisions that didn't feel right you know working with people who were out of integrity with my values weren't living a lifestyle or running their business in a way that felt right for me and ignoring you know contractors I was working with or whatever that maybe it didn't feel like a perfect fit but I just continued on I just continued on because that's what you do like it just makes sense to have that help or to do that and again I see clients doing this a lot in work in terms of avoiding making a decision from a place of intuition ignoring that desire or ignoring that gut feeling because it looks okay on paper and that was a big one for me in work the third mistake I want to talk about and this really impacted my my relationship because I really noticed that over the years as obsessed like as much as I love the work that I do a big block that I had and a big mistake that I was making and I see this in clients too I had a conversation with someone just the other week who just joined my group program about this the third mistake that I used to make all of the time was worrying about work 
and bringing work home energetically, right? Like mentally, bringing work home in my head in the evening and at the weekends. And I have worked so hard on this because when you live, when you're a feminine leader and you prioritise, ultimately you want your personal life to be as just as fulfilling and rich and beautiful as your work. You still love what you do. You still love the work that you do, but you also love being able to switch off and go on a date night or go on a lovely walk at the weekends and not be worrying about, oh my God, that meeting I had, oh God, it didn't go well. Like I see this time and time again and I've done it countless times bringing that energy of worry, of of anxiety, of stress about work, overthinking, right, overanalyzing, dreading Monday morning because you need to address that issue, but bringing that energy into your relationship because you're bringing it home and so often your partner becomes the, the, the holder of all of that you know, that you offload, you need to offload to them, you need, because you're overthinking and you're feeling anxiety, you need to offload to them, and I used to do this a lot, you know, we'd be sat having dinner, and I would be like, oh my god, this happened today, and I got this message, and I just don't know how to deal with it, and I'd just be a mess, (laughs) I'd just be an anxious mess, and that was impacting my personal time with Adam, with my fiance, because that's not quality time that we're going to be connected and relaxing and enjoying each other's company. You know, yes, we're going to talk about work. Of course, you're going to talk about work with your partner. But if your entire time you're sat at the dinner table is just consumed by you needing to vent and offload, or if it's the weekend and say we were on a dog walk and I would be just, again, needing to offload and sorry, I'm overthinking. I just need to say like, what do you think I should do? You know, needing advice. Like at the end of the day, your partner can support you emotionally in, you know, going through challenging times at work, but they're not your therapist. They're not your therapist. And I've made that mistake of, basically not not having done especially like I would say two or three years ago and beyond not having done the deeper healing work on my nervous system on my mindset so that when I was dealing with a challenge in my business let's say I was in a conflict with someone or, you know, there was a challenging experience with a client that I was navigating, or I was worried about my latest launch, or whatever it might have been, I couldn't hold that myself, and basically I couldn't process what was going on, I couldn't process and really move through the anxiety, or the worry, or the stress, And I was also making that mistake or that challenge or whatever it was. I was making that mean something about me because I'd not done the healing work to detach myself from my work, detach, you know, my my self-worth from the output that I have. So I would literally believe that if I wasn't making the money that I wanted to make or if I had upset, you know, upset a client or... Um, I don't know, someone wasn't as happy as I wanted them to be, I would be like, that is because of me. That's because there's something wrong with me or I'm not worthy or whatever it might have been. I'd not done that deeper nervous system healing work to release that shit because it is a lie, it's not true and it's certainly not supporting you to thrive at work. And when it's causing you to bring work home, and bring all those worries and stresses home, that is also impacting your personal life and your relationship, and it did with me, because Adam is so 
loving and caring and he is not responsible to, <laughs> for my for my like any work worries or stresses I have you know when when I'm off work I am off work so in comparison to now I might be dealing with something that's challenging or stressful and I will deal with it in work so I have I create the space and I have the right boundaries so that if something is happening that is challenging and I can think of something a few weeks ago you know where I was navigating a challenging decision that I was making and I was navigating different clients you know feelings around that and I had to really I had to really be with that and that of course because I'm human it was stressful right it was upsetting at at times to to be going through that you're a human being at the end of the day this isn't about you know it's not like having complete emotional shutdown and just being like whatever I'm never going to worry about stuff but what I was able to do was go through my toolkit process the worry process the stress whatever was coming up but also like really confidently deal with it in work so that when I go home I can say oh yeah this might happen um this happened today I was a bit worried about it but I'm feeling really good about it I'm confident that the outcome will be fine like you know I have this belief now (laughs) that like nothing nothing is nothing is urgent, nothing is dangerous, right, nothing is harmful, you know, nothing is, no one is going to die, I'm not a brain surgeon making a mistake here, I'm running a coaching business, so it's safe for me to finish work and switch off and not be sat at the dinner table, like, needing to vent and offload to Adam about something that's happening, and in that sense I can then be more present I can be more relaxed I can enjoy our time together and not feel like I need to be offloading work stress and I had this with a client a few weeks ago she shared that you know something had happened in her work on a Friday and bless her like she had spent the whole weekend really trying to like take her mind off it but it was always there and it was always looming. And if that is your experience, you probably resonate with this. And just know that if you feel like you're you're taking work home now, you're taking work worries home, just know that it doesn't always have to be that way. And it's, uh, you know, you deserve to feel switched off and connected and really present with your partner or with your loved ones when you're not working, even when something difficult is happening at work. And that was a big thing that I moved through. So, mistake number four I made that impacted my personal life and my work was making my work my entire personality. (laughs) Making my work, my career, my business, all consuming like all of me and this came from a really well-meaning place because how I grew up and I'm sure many of you watching this can resonate how I grew up was the the time in society where the independent boss babe (laughs) was seen as like the mod the the model of what the perfect woman should be. I grew up in the era of Destiny's Child, Independent Woman, the song, you know, all the women who are independent, right? I've got I've bought my own I've bought my own diamond rings, I've bought my own clothes, I've bought my own car, I pay for my own house. Like I am basically the perfect woman because I don't rely on anyone else but myself. And so I grew up feeling like my work, my business, the money I make, the title in my bio, 
like Instagram bio or LinkedIn or whatever it is for you, makes me who I am, like shapes who I am, shapes my entire personality. And also, before I did a lot of the healing work, shaped my self-worth, my deservingness, my (laughs) whatever, like long list of other things, right? And when I learned to detach from that and to come into acceptance of my my work and my personal life are two different aspects and both are beautiful and both are amazing and both are parts of me but my work is not me. I am not Kat the coach. I am not just a business owner. I am not just a ambitious, successful woman. I am a fiance. I am a daughter. I am a best friend. I am a dog mom, right? I am, there are so many other elements to my life that have nothing to do with my work. And the mistake I made in making my who I, like what I do all consuming was if you see yourself as this one aspect of your identity your mood your energy your how your self image how you see yourself how you feel about yourself your beliefs about yourself your behaviours, your habits, your actions that you choose to take, everything you do and the results you get all hinge on what that one area of your life is doing and is saying. And that's really great when you're smashing the promotion or when you've just got your new paycheck from your recent pay rise or you smashed your last launch and you made more money than ever in your business. That's all well and good when you're doing those things. Because if things are going really, really well, then I would be like, oh, things are going well, I feel good. I'm earning more, I'm earning great money or I have new clients or I got this great feedback. So I am good. I can feel good because I am that one aspect of my life. But you can imagine that if you pin all of yourself onto that one area, onto your work, your job title, your income, whatever it might be, what happens when you're going through a challenge? Like my last example, right? Like the last mistake that I was talking about in terms of bringing work home. If if you're going through a challenging period or if you're getting constructive criticism and really you know I'm going to say negative feedback from a boss or from a colleague or from a client what are you gonna what are you gonna do in response to that if you attach your entire identity and self-worth to your work you're gonna crumble and that's the mistake that I made and that's where I was at many points in the beginning of my coaching business, I would say in the first like five years of my coaching business, so we're talking as close to, as close as like two years ago, if I had an unhappy client or if I had negative feedback on my podcast or if I did a launch and something didn't quite go to plan, I would panic I would feel like my world my world was imploding I wouldn't be able to relax I wouldn't be able to switch off because I was my business I was my job title I was my work and as ambitious and high achieving female leaders we can make the mistake of thinking that that is who we are and that's all we are when and we and in turn we kind of devalue the other elements of our identity 
like I guess that goes back to the ego thing I was talking about before right it's more glamorous and sexy to be perceived as the independent high achieving woman it's more glamorous it's more sexy it's more you know it's more again destiny's child independent woman vibes that song it's it's glamorous it's sexy it's it's like look at her she isn't she is doing really well for herself so of course we like lean into that part of our identity but in turn we kind of devalue the other aspects of us and when I tell you that making my relationship more important than my business right making my personal life more important more of a priority for me than my business when I tell you the joy that that has brought me (laughs) and the success that has brought me like I could talk about that all day and night because there are so many incredible women who are amazing at what they do and they are also loving partners or mothers or dog mums or aunties or friends and yet they neglect their personal life at the expense of hustling and overworking and burning out and leaving the office late because they value that one aspect of their identity more than anything because it it gives them that feeling of validation that used to be me I felt so validated if my launch went well or the project that I was working on was really well received but what happened then is that when those things weren't going well right when I was feeling challenged when I was navigating a hard conversation or setting a boundary or you know in that testing phase where things weren't quite where they where I wanted them to be yet I was crumbling and making that all about me and who was getting the brunt of that again my relationship coming home from work, feeling drained, feeling like there's something wrong with me, feeling like I'm not doing it right because I pinned my whole self on what I do and the money I earn or how many sales I've made that month or how well whatever went. So that was a big mistake that was impacting the energy I was bringing to our home to my personal life but also to my business the last mistake that I made that really impacted our relationship and also my business was staying quiet about my needs about my desires and avoiding hard conversations this has been one of the most detrimental mistakes I've made at work and at home as a female leader because when you avoid things you are not showing up in integrity with yourself when you think about it if you want something or if you desire something to change or you have a boundary that you need to set If you're thinking that, feeling that, desiring that, but then zip, like zipping it and not saying anything, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing the other person a disservice. So like I said, this might have showed up in my work, in the team members I was working with or at home with my partner. And I see it again with clients so often they want to speak to their boss about something they're really wanting to drop a day at work so they have more balance or they're really wanting to raise their prices with their clients or there are certain people they work with that might show up late or might ask tons of questions and they're wanting 
to empower that person and, and have a potentially awkward conversation about that and about how they want that to change at home. If I wanted to do something, if I wanted to, you know, go one weekend and try something new or I remember for so long, for example, having a desire to lean into my spirituality more but feeling scared and not feeling like I can express that and like avoiding those conversations because I didn't want to feel uncomfortable, I didn't want to feel judged or I didn't want to feel like I was making that person, putting that person out or making them feel awkward or or potentially upsetting them if it was a boundary and this is female leadership you know it's not about people pleasing and making sure everyone is super happy all the time and everyone is smiling and everyone's always in a great mood it includes the hard conversations but the difference was and the mistake that I made was thinking that if I want something to change or if I have something that I desire that I really want to happen that I can't express that without feeling like a bitch or without sounding like I'm you know being negative and I see this a lot with women in teams or with a you know with a boss or a colleague at work as well not wanting to have a hard conversation to say this has been happening, this isn't quite working for me, can we work together to figure this out and change this? They feel like they can't have that conversation without coming across like they're complaining or like they're nagging or like they, you know, what, oh my God, that person's going to think I'm being so difficult. And again, we have all these stories, all this conditioning that blocks us from getting what we want it stops us from getting what we want and so staying quiet when I wanted to ask for something, I wanted to ask for help, I wanted to receive something, blocked me from so much support and so much joy and in turn I also would add that it actually, it actually hindered the connection that I have because if you think about it, If I desire to receive support from you in some way and you know you're you're let's say you're my partner and I would love for us to connect deeper and go on date nights more for example I could think that and want that and then think oh god but like I don't know like what if he says no or what if he doesn't make effort to do it no 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 and just not say anything but in doing that I'm actually not giving my partner an opportunity to deepen their connection with me to deepen our intimacy to deepen our trust in our relationship because I am not even giving them the chance to to hear what I have to say or to provide me with the thing that I want to receive. In work, it's like, you know, you're not even giving, and I've, I can see how I've done this in the past with old team members, for example, like I'm not even giving them the opportunity to really hear what I, what I want and, and really be able to provide that shift all that support for me because I'm just avoiding the conversation entirely and so many women are missing out and for so long I miss out on those deeper connections that can happen in your relationship and in work when you're just fucking honest with people about what you want and you don't make up these stories anymore about being a nag or being negative because, especially because, right, and this is something I love to teach clients in my program, you have the tools to have the conversation. You have the tools to have the conversation with compassion, with kindness, with a softness, 
You're not coming to that conversation with an armour on, with a wall up, with, you know, like, an aggressive tone of voice or, like, riling the other person up, you know, pushing their buttons, being confrontational. We're not coming to the conversation from that place. We're coming with softness. We're coming with heart-led emotional energy, not being a robot or not being really aggressive but just being you right being in your heart and saying I really miss you I really want to feel more connected or I would love it if we could do this more together that would make me feel really supported can you do that for me or at work it might look like the the way that we're navigating meetings at the moment and the way you're bringing work to the meeting half finished that's not working for me right now I really value you as a team member and I need to see you stepping up I want to be cheering you along every step of the way can we work together to do that avoiding those hard conversations is such a mistake because it's blocking you from receiving what you truly want it's blocking you from receiving better happier more thriving connections with the people you care about at home and in work and so those are five mistakes that I wanted to share with you that I've said almost ruined my business at times because they've lost me money, (laughs) they've blocked me from making more money, they've led me to burnout and also they've like at times really negatively impacted my relationship too because I've not been showing up as my best self, I've been showing up stressed, I've not been connected, I've not been, I'm just going to be honest and say at times in my business journey I've not been a nice person to be around I've not been fun, (laughs) I've not been pleasant, I've been a bitch, I've been grumpy, I've been irritable, I've been disconnected and this isn't to say that it's not okay to make these mistakes but what I will say is if you recognise some of these mistakes in yourself then this is an opportunity to go within and see if there's a deeper layer of healing and of shifting of change that is going to transform the way you work and the way you live your life right how you come home at the end of the night how you show up to those challenges at work can you show up in a different way can you show up with softness with more heart this is exactly the kind of work that I do with my amazing clients and if you are interested in learning more about this and basically eradicating these mistakes from your life as well then I would love to invite you to my latest free masterclass which is coming up at the end of September it's Thursday the 26th of September and it's 7 30 p.m UK time So if you want to drop on the IG live, if you want to drop a comment or DM me with the word masterclass, I'll get you the link. And if you're listening on the podcast, I will drop the link in the show notes for you. I just want to wrap this up by saying that if you recognise even one or two of these mistakes in yourself right now, it's okay. And I've been there. I feel like I've been probably brutally honest about my own like past (laughs) experience of these things in this in this live in this podcast episode so I just want you to know that I've been there and it's okay there is nothing you know there's nothing wrong with you and if anything it's like so many of these things are perpetuated by those stories right by those negative stories or beliefs that you might have about yourself and if we can approach that with the right support with the right toolkit you get to get to a place where you feel lighter you feel more present when you finish work at the end of the day you're not bringing that work home 
you're more connected with your partner and with your loved ones. When you are off work, you are truly off work. You're not constantly in a stress response, in survival mode. And in turn, you actually get more work done, more impactful work done. You're more productive. You do still earn the money that you want to earn. You know, through this work, I've not, I've not stopped growing my business. I've not um, lost, you know, money by eradicating these mistakes. I've actually earned really good money. And I've continued to grow and I've continued to be a great coach and work with amazing clients. And, you know, I've had clients in corporate too who've implemented some of the tools inside of my program in their work. They are working less, but they're still making more money. They're still being put forward for the promotion or they're still landing the pay rise and they still can switch off and enjoy themselves when they come home and not be bringing all that work home. So you do get to have both and that is what I stand for. That is what I believe. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. Really relatable mistakes, I think, is women we all make from time to time. It's how we're conditioned by society. All unlearnable, supported by people like yourself. Exactly. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate your comment. And yeah, so much of this stuff runs deep and it's ha- it's been um, embedded into us from a young age but you you do get to rewrite that story right you do get to shift out of these dynamics and if effectively stop making these mistakes and be able to have a completely different reality in even just a few short months time so i'd love to see you at the masterclass on the 26th of September if you resonate with anything I've shared today and if you have any more shares, comments, um, personal you know stories that you'd like to share I would love to hear from you in my DMs on Instagram so I'll hopefully speak to you there. I'll see you soon loves.